Reliability. It's one of the best traits you could ask for. When you need a reliable solution to share online resources and connect computers, phones, and wireless access points, Cisco Business 250 Series Smart Switches are the way to go. They provide ideal solutions at an affordable price that's perfect for any home or small business. In this video, we'll talk about some of the features of the CBS 250 and walk through a few configurations next. First, let's talk about the global LEDs found on our device. The system LED lights flash green when the switch is powered on, booting, performing self-tests, or acquiring an IP address. If the light ever flashes amber though, the switch has detected hardware or firmware failure or a configuration file error. To access a switch with a web-based interface, we gotta know the IP address the switch is using. Switches use the default factory IP address of 192.168.1.254 with a subnet of slash 24. When the switch is using the default IP address, the system LED flashes continuously. When the switch is using a DHCP server assigned IP address or an administrator has configured a static ID address, the system LED is a steady green and the DHCP is enabled by default. It's time to log in. Cisco, spelled lowercase, is our default username and password. Once inside, we'll be prompted to change our username and password. We'll do so now. Under the dashboard, the CBS 250 offers a simple intuitive dashboard that powers the deployment, monitoring, and lifecycle management of our switches. Here, we can see the resource utilization graph, as well as the system health display and RAM memory logs. This product supports many more features. Therefore, the web GUI includes hundreds of configurations and display pages. These pages are divided into basic and advanced display modes. The advanced mode offers a full set of configuration options. When the user switches from basic to advanced, the browser page will reload. Now, let's go through the getting started section. This will guide us through how to install and manage our device. We can use the various links and follow the on-screen instructions to quickly configure our switch. We'll go to the configuration wizards next. Here, we can go through a quick and easy configuration wizard. After the initial setup wizard, we'll enter in the system location and contact. We can also use the default host name or define our own. And once that's finished, we'll click next. Then we'll create a new IP interface. We can choose the None option to keep the current configuration. On the next page, we can change the username and password. For this example, we'll select to keep the current username and password. On the next page, we can set up the system clock from the SMTP server, or we can import the time from our local computer. We'll click Next and hit Apply to save our changes. Now we'll navigate to the VLAN configuration wizard we can choose the interface we'd like to use as the trunk interface. In this instance, we'll use port one, since it is the port connected to our router. We can also create a new VLAN. On the next page, we'll create VLAN 20 and name it admin. On the next page, we'll choose port one as the trunk port that will pass VLAN 20 on trunk traffic. After that, we can also add access interface to VLAN 20. For this example, we'll choose ports 13 through 16. To finish up, we'll click Apply to save. There's also a configuration wizard that can allow for an ACL configuration, but we'll leave that for another video. If we head over to Administration and File Management, we'll find the firmware operations. A file management system is an application that is used to store, arrange, and access the files that are on our device. The system files contain information such as configuration information or firmware images. Various actions can be performed with these files, like selecting the firmware file from which device boots, modifying various types of configuration files internally, or copying files to or from an external device, such as an external server. Up next is the system log. We'll go straight to the log settings. This section describes the system logging, which enables a device to generate multiple independent logs. 
Each of these logs is a set of messages describing system events. This allows for a quick overview of events inside the switch's history. This is a very handy tool for any home office or small business office. The device generates the following logs. Local logs, logs sent to the console interface, logs written in a cyclical list of logged events in the RAM and erased when device reboots, and logs written in a cyclical log file saved to the flash memory and persisting across reboots. In addition, we can send messages to the remote syslog servers in the form of SNMP traffics and syslog messages. Another useful feature within the switch is the ping. The ping utility will test if a remote host can be reached and measures the round trip time for the packet sent. Ping operates by sending Internet Control Messages Protocol, or ICMP, echo request packets to the target host and waits for an ICMP response. It measures a round trip time and records any packet loss. If we activate ping, we can see that we do not have internet connection. We sent off four packets and none were received. That is why our packet loss is now 100%. This is a great way to test internet connectivity within the switch. Finally, we'll talk about PoE. We're going to click on Port Management, PoE, and then Properties. Cisco Business 250 Series switches are available with as many as 48 power over Ethernet ports. This capability simplifies advanced technology deployments like IP telephones and wireless and IP surveillance by allowing us to connect and power network endpoints over a single Ethernet cable. This offers simplicity of use to any type of user. There are many features within the CBS 250, such as smart port, multicast, access control list, and QoS, which will be discussed in later videos. Thanks for getting to know the Cisco Business 250 Series Smart Switch and for watching Tech Talks from Cisco. We'll see you next time.